Boomer Midrange. Some green, black, rock, whatever you want to call it. We got four copies of Sora and the Mirthless to generate some card advantage. We got some Lulith for tokens of card advantage. We got some Questersons here for bringing the beatdowns. We got Tracker for card advantage and beatdowns. We got some Disruption and Removal spells. We got Land War Elves to accelerate into our top end a little bit faster. We've got Scoos for extra threat slash graveyard hate. So let's go ahead and dive on into some games with this one and see how it goes. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, around. Oh, sweet. By the way, I haven't talked about it on stream yet, but I tweeted it. I don't think I talked about it on stream. Next Tuesday, a week from tomorrow, I got invited to play in the Pokemon Unite Twitch Rivals. So that should be fun. They haven't announced yet how teams and stuff for that are going to work yet. So I'm curious to see how that, that works out. I think when they do League of Legends Twitch Rivals, they do a player draft among the people that are invited. So I wonder if they'll do something like that, because it's also a MOBA. I call Green Black Rock Sean Connery. God bless. I mean, it's not any less nonsensical than the rest of the names we have for these decks, right? Any more nonsensical? All of your thoughts are belong to me. Excuse me? Opponents on the spice chat. Out here living their best life. Hungry boy, chat. He's here to scavangle the game board. Oh no, we're being out scavangled. That's just rude. How am I supposed to scavangle now, chat? You deal. Yes. I, I would like to reveal that one, please. One of, one of those, please. What is your quest? I seek the face. Extreme Cream Dream. Thanks for the third of year. Welcome back. So this one's probably over at this point. Blood for knowledge, a fair trade. I feel like their deck seems wacky enough that they could have a sweeper, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pass here rather than playing Knight of the Ebon Legion out. Really know what the the range their deck has currently. 
Nothing on Innistrad is free. With all the checking I did there to try and make sure it was tapping the right thing, it would have been faster to just manually tap all of it. Uh, Dead Guy Ale was a disaster, but that wasn't really Soren's fault. This deck is our, this is our first match with this deck. Miscellaneous Doom Blades matchup. I think I want to cut some or all of our discard spells. Oh, that's a good thought. We should field them to check if they had basics for the future. Bring in, bring in all of these. We'll leave in a couple of thought seasons. Thanks for sticking around for over three years, Arno. Welcome back. Oh no, chat, we're clueless. Animation on the vampire tokens real slick. Did a good job with it. I guess we have to chump block the skews now, or we lose the Soren. That's fine. Less fine, chat. Less fine. Yeah, yeah, Brian Bree Tracker is very good. It's just any any token. May never be restored now. It might be right, uh, Elf Pulse here. We could get a two for one by pulsing their holes. I'm not sure pulsing their holes is something I'm allowed to do on Twitch without violating the TOS. Out of my way. I have a way. You fight for me. We messed up, chat. We should have done the Soren first. Taken, taken less damage. Blood for knowledge, a fair trade. Pseudo Panda, thanks to be over two years. Welcome back. 
crunch, 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 crunch. Well, you're only allowed to pulse their holes if you're in just chanting. Got it. That makes sense. All right. Oh. I had fun there, but that doesn't really give us a good measure of how our deck is. Opponent's deck was uh pretty outlandish, just like ours. And, uh, run into some more meta stuff to see how we form an opinion of what we think of our deck. Uh, the last good mid-range standard deck was definitely, um, the last good standard mid-range standard deck was definitely, uh, I think Esper Hero. I don't really consider the Adventures deck a, I don't really consider the Adventures deck a, uh, a mid-range deck that was more of a, it was more of what I would call an engine deck. It had like a core of cards that like once it got online, it like buried you in card advantage. And you could like maybe argue that that difference is semantics, but I think it's relevant. So I could jam Sorin around sensor here. A lot of these decks don't have main deck veto. I think we're supposed to jam Sorin here. Because once they get, it's a shame we don't have a third black, so we can't thought seize plus Sorin. But like once they have a third land, like Archmage's Charm gets opened up. So the odds, the odds of this resolving here are high. Higher the next turn, I should say. Consider yourself fortunate, our motives lie. My way. All right, I'm listening. Blood for knowledge, a fair trade. And they had Jawari disruption. Hopefully the only thing we're approaching here is the end of this game. Nothing on Innistra is free. Oh god, my body is ready to get set all the wreckage. Just a shark typhoon deal. They know about the Blood Chief's Thirst, right? It's like, they know this isn't killing my Sorin. This isn't tapping my Sorin. Sorin is faithful to me, opponent. 
Only I'm allowed to tap the sword in. So now, even if they have a sweeper, Sorin's minus seven is lethal. I don't know that that was us out grinding them so much as we just got underneath them, right? Which is probably what we need to be doing to win that matchup. Just run them down. Which to be fair, this, this deck is much better configured for running people down than like the Dead Guy L deck was, right? Between these green threats here and like Briar Bridge Tracker having a lot of power. And Land War Elves accelerating. Do we think they're on Gear Hulk? Do I need to leave Scoos in because we put them on Gear Hulk if they're on Lotus Field combo? They could just be ramping to approach. I need, I need four cuts. I think I, think I want to cut these. If I cut these, I have how many threats? I have 18 plus these. Let's try this. I reserve I reserve the right to bring, to bring those back in. We have not actually gotten activated yet. I don't know if it has an animation. People usually pack it in. Oh yeah, that's true too. Hive of the Hive of the Eye Tyrant is a uh, is Graveyard Heat two at a pinch. That creature land is so good. I think that's the best one in the cycle. Most of them, they're all playable, but I think I think that one's a cut above. What's going on, Juggalos? Thanks for the almost three years. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully your work improves. It's that it's that time of year, so I don't think the weather's about to improve for anyone. I think our planeswalkers are aggressive enough that we want them here. They both they both put power and toughness into play. Your team has gone from eight to three in 30 days. Yikes. So what two cards are we taking from these? It's definitely Wrath of God. The question is, is the second one Shark Typhoon or Deluge? I think it's Deluge. And then this gets a counter on it this turn because we shocked and thought seized. No, I wanted to pay the two life to get a counter on the knight. That was intentional. God bless America, chat. My country, tis of thee. Sweet land of liberty. Of the I sing. Yeah, I, lo I love this card. This is my favorite one drop on Arena. And it's not close. It's a sweet one. It's a sweet one after all. Do, 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 do. And then honestly, my curve cap's at five, so if they want to cycle Shark Typhoon and eat my elf here to take five, I'm okay with that. Go.
Does liking V8 make me an old person? I like V8. So the answer to your question is a solid maybe. of all Innistrad, my will must be obeyed. The classic no, at nine life no. opponent has dealt zero damage to us. <laughs> any cost, chat. Any cost. Not some cost. Any cost. Open mind. You keep ticking up here. My ways are not for the weak. Well, that's vomit inducing. Archmage's charm is so good. I must train harder. I'm actually dead to a removal spell now because their Lotus Field lets them pump the night. Alright, am I dead? Hey, Oratog, thank you for the tier three and thank you for the almost three and a half years. Welcome back. We just try and kill them, right? me we're all oh there's an animation oh, get bit expectations exceeded please concede Well, at least Soren gave us enough life that we're not dead to the shark. Are they dead to Hive of the Eye Tyrant? This isn't a fight. No time for a break. What is this? When has the auto tapper ever in its life wanted to tap a creature land? Like you like th these are the parts that get me, right? Like if it was consistent, 
I would understand, but like, usually you're like fighting with the auto tapper tooth and nail to not use, to like use your creature land. Oh, they untapped the cave. They did untap the cave. Okay. That's fine. We still need to field chat because we need to we need to shuffle we need to shuffle the approach here. All right, so they have the Cave of the Frost Dragon to activate. So yeah, yeah, we're just gonna make some Menace Friends here. Darkness will swallow the light. Subservience will be rewarded. Will be rewarded. And obviously we could still lose here. They could just like peel and approach. It is, it is a what it is, what it is. My board is very scary, chat. Very menacing and intimidating. Hurry. Bring me pictures of Hive of the Eye, Tyrant Chat. It's a menace. Thanks for the follow, Bab. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to everybody, by the way. Great to see over 1,200 people in here for some magic. If you're like Bab, you're new to the channel, welcome. My name's Jeff Hoagland. I stream here full time on Twitch. We do Magic the Gathering Arena five days a week to start the stream. We play pretty much all constructed for the arena segments. We do uh, standard and historic as a split. Today has been all historic because we did a bunch of standard at the end of last week, but tomorrow we'll go back to doing at least one standard and historic deck per day. If you're into that sort of thing, be sure to check out my YouTube channels as well. I have won the Daily Deck Digest that posts an edited, concise video every single day with a different standard or historic deck. Kind of talks through what the deck is looking to do and then highlights two games that kind of show that deck working appropriately. And then there's my youtube.com forward slash Jeff Hoagland where um, everything that I stream gets posted in the full chunks if you want to see longer length content to kind of evaluate things for yourself as opposed to decks just at their best. Thanks for the follow, Sam Shee. Oh, I have the old URL for the Daily Deck Digest. We got we got a fancy YouTube URL for the Daily Deck Digest now, chat. We got a real URL, chat. It is, yeah, the new channel is monetized. They actually, the new channel had enough people watching it that it got monetized before it even had access to getting a URL, which is awesome. Appreciate, appreciate all the regulars that have dropped, dropped us up at the new place and checked it out. Never didn't have it. I think we just tracker rather than elf plus ooze. Jeff is in bed with Big Shuffler. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm not saying I'm not in bed with Big Shuffler. Oh, they're thinking about it, chat. 
Oh, yeah. It's a real shame we don't have a second black here. I'm going to go ahead and just field. So I can grab a second black for next turn. We'll drop scavenging use down then. Uh, what's the best way to describe the secondary channels? Both the Deck Digest and the Pokemon Unite channel are performing better than I've expected them to at this point, but neither of them have technically been worth the investment yet. I expect, I expect it to take a year or two before they have meaningful metrics. You can deal with my servant. I'm busy. Su success on a platform like YouTube is a lot more about um, consistency and eventually just hoping you hit something that pleases the algorithm. And uh, like, like basically every YouTube success story from people that I know that are successful on the platform is it's just like every story goes the same. I was doing the thing I had always been doing for six months or a year or two years or three years. And then suddenly my videos started getting more views because the algorithm decided it liked me. It's not, it's not really something that you can just like do these right things to control. Yeah, it's, it's, that's exactly right. It's a slot machine. You just got to keep pulling the lever. That's a great, great way to put it. I think I'm thought seizing plus maelstrom pulsing this turn. Just gonna get a peek at their hand, see what's up here. Oh, they're a, they're the life gain deck. Okay, I wouldn't have guessed that. Well, with that in mind, do I just play this elf and plan to maelstrom pulse the voices? I think that's the play, huh? Yeah, I think that's the play. Yeah, I've paid off here. You want to attack with Spellbinder? I'll happily trade this token. Oh, that's an interesting attack. I guess we just let Soren go to go to one. I don't think I want to jump with my elf. It's fine. I want to draw cards with him anyways. So. You wish to know my secrets? Very well. Very well. Tell me your secret, sexy vampire man. The scavenging ooze is about to be huge, chat. Absolutely huge. while since I've played a, a scavenging use deck. Card slaps, chat. Hey, Edmar, welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Look at me. I am the life gain deck. All right, so all the removal spells come in. Crippling fear comes in. The discard spells come out here. I just want more cards that play to the board. And then Lulf is probably a little slow at the top end. The rest of this looks good. Soren does look like Geralt from the Netflix show for sure. You ended above one life, very inefficient use of resources. Listen, Soren was doing his darndest, okay? 
Uh, Ceratops is a pretty slow and awkward reach, reach, reach creature. Takes it a while to get to that point. We get a new Witcher season on Netflix soon, speaking of, right? Is it, does anybody, it's December, right? Does anybody know what, when in December? 17th, not till mid-December? Chat, that's forever from now. I'm a millennial, I want it now. Give it to me now, chat. You took my, my land war elf? Really? All right, deal. Deal Arino. Well, that's heckin' rude. They've delayed our quest, shit. No, I don't watch shows until they're fully released. I, I plan to I plan to watch Arcane after uh after all the episodes are out, not before. Oh, I guess that was loose. I forgot that that was gonna shrink my Dorko. Sag. They might trade Skyclave for Tracker here now. Because of my mistake. Uh. Friendo. Friendo. Are they like gonna get to 27 next turn? Or gonna go like land, Valkyrie, other thing? I'm very, I'm very confused, chat. No, they must have just missed that they had a creature in the bin, huh? Must have. How swole my scoos is, chat. The swoliest of scoos. Oh, you know what? I probably should have left this a 5-5 so I could threaten death touch on this. So if I play Questing Beast, their voice becomes a 6-6. Six, six. Which doesn't seem great for me. Have to jump the night. Why? My will must be dire times call for dire tactics. Yeah, they, don't, they don't have to block. They just like no attacks. Oh, I guess that's true. Maybe I, I I missed two points of damage there by not attacking. That's fair. That's fair. I'm not I'm not blocking with it. Desperately need one of our dozen removal spells here. Although I suppose one of my dozen removal spells is a heartless act, which is not particularly great against the voice. 
In it to win it, shit. In it to win it. Pump both of these. Pump up the pump up the wump up the jam. Do 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 do. Now we've got them under double abyss here. It's two lethal attackers. Big, big slaps for sure. Why leave back the 1-1? One, one? That's fair. I didn't think about it. If I do this, I can't pump Ebon Legion. No, I don't, I don't actually don't think we questing beast, right? Cause if I, if I don't questing beast, they have to jump block the knight or it kills them. Now I definitely wanted to play another thread. I don't think we need to hive yet. Thanks for the two and a half years more text. You do, we have half year sub icons now. The half year, the half year icons are the, are the silver. Oh, and ha! This token will let Briar Bridge keep its attack after I get rid of this. Wow, that's really not good for us. Well, shit. Removal, please. Are we naming Scout? I think we're naming Scout, right? We want to keep the Briar Bridge Tracker alive. Yeah, it'll be a two three, but I think that's fine, right? Don't I do a post combat? No, I want to. I want to kill these, right? Yeah, tip the field's a good show. Hey, thanks for the 15 months pod rules. Uh, questing be- God damn it. What a brutal fucking game. I mean, we were really far ahead. And then the opponent's just, the opponent has drawn four lands and 15 cards and every spell, every spell they've drawn has been good. We draw a removal spell for Valkyrie and we drew another land. Magic's such a shit game sometimes. 
Just act actual nothing we could do here. Super frustrating. Felt like I played well and made a bunch of good decisions there. Just doesn't matter. One more land in the game ends. <sighs> All right, that's fine. Game two, game three, game three, we won the first one. Like miss our land drop and not play game this time. Dap land's better than missing, I guess. Come on, play resplendent angel. We'll draw an untapped land and we'll get to we'll get to have a good game. Well, could be worse. Could have missed again. with tap sack draw a card be too powerful well those lands literally exist in modern for reference they're called horizon lands for not playing this out. God save the antelopes. They're drawing lands this game. So Lands, how lands enter play tapped or untapped balances which types of decks those lands are good in. So for example, lands like Blooming Marsh and Hive of the Eye Tyrant are good in low curve aggressive decks, whereas lands like say, you know, Clifftop Retreat or the slow lands that we have right now are better in slower, more controlling decks.
We did do it. We did do it, Chip. That's definitely, that's definitely something that they think about in terms of balancing, like, especially standard formats. Yeah, Briar, Briar, Briar Bridge Tracker is just kind of different than Tireless Tracker, right? The, the Vigilance stat line is valuable. And the fact that it, like, attacks for four right away without having to sacrifice anything also has value, too. They're an incomplete cycle on Arena. The other half of these lands exist. I really, I really wish they'd just drop them in a historic archive. I agree. All 10 fast lands would be great. The, zo the zoomers in the audience won't remember, but we had, we had only half, half the fetch lands in modern for a long time. That was, that was atrocious. Like playing your Jun deck with Misty Rainforest and, uh, your Jun deck with Misty Rainforest and uh, uh, Marsh Flats. Is something. Gilded! Look at the trickle down economy in action. Our 51st shillionaire minted here in Hoglandia. Thanks for watching a bunch over the last little bit. Uh, we did win the match against Angels. They drew some lands and we were able to win. Let's make sure. Make sure the trickle down continues. Our next shillionaire will now only need to spend 999,949 shillings. Oh, you know what's actually kind of gas? Um, Questing Beast stops protection from creatures from keeping them alive. They're the Epiphany deck, or the Angel deck, I'm sure. Oh no! Oh no! Oh man! All right, so if I had known they were playing this version of the deck, I would have killed their token on one. I just assumed they were the angel version. So for people that aren't familiar, they get these two cards in play and then you die instantaneously. That's how Magic the Gathering works. That being said, uh, instant speed removal plays a disruptive element here, which is nice. Maybe leave a couple of Soren in at the top end. I think that's better than anything else we have here. Yes, there is a lot of a lot of clicking happens, and then then I die. Uh, by the way, Gilded, remember you get to submit a deck with um with your Shillionaire. You can do that using the form on the site. Just put in the comment that it's for your Shillionaire. Oh, and someone this was a while ago at this point. Someone asked if deck submissions were still fifty dollars. They are. Always, always find details here on my site. You are all welcome for making becoming Shillionaire that much easier to reach by suddenly feel the need to oppress people. I'm gonna need one of you plebs to fetch me the Wall Street Journal. Oh, and uh, DM me in the subs Discord Gilded so I can let you into Beverly Shills. I promise it's the place you want to be. Lana War Elves has just been so good during this set today. I think getting to play things ahead of curve is busted, Chip. Uh, I I just wouldn't accept a Dark Steel reactor build around. I don't think that card's playable. Like, I like working with off-meta things, but... No cost is too 
So I'm gonna plus Sorin this turn because they could have Anger of the Gods or Sweltering Sun or Deafening Clarion next turn. And I don't want to make a token into that. And we have these discard spells. So we could like check for a sweeper first. I'm gonna take a couple of cards out of the opponent's hand. Couple, two, three. Zack the Titan, thanks for the follow. Good afternoon. It's dead, Jim, you've murdered him. Okay, so we take Creativity, Shark Typhoon, Shark Typhoon. Serve me well. This deck actually feels like pretty reasonable. The fact, I was expecting this deck to feel kind of bad after Did Gael felt kind of bad, but like Land War Elves and the slightly more aggressive nature of the green threats, it feels, feels like a pretty reasonable mix of things. Don't give me hope, sorry. And then Tracker's going right on top here, right? Because, like, he just replaces himself with a card. Uh, assuming we get a historic card release, we will have a Hoaglandia open after the next historic card release. But when is, when is the next historic card release? I don't know. It would be nice if Wizards would tell us. I just like, I don't want to put a historic open on the calendar now and then have to move it when they announce a card release. I'd rather, I'd rather just wait to put it on the calendar. I mean, we technically die to a creativity here, right? Am I dead? Did you get me? Okay, no longer dead. Should be good. I can't imagine they have anything that lives here through the Ceratops. Oh God, they could have settled the wreckage. What's our motto, chat? What's our motto? I ain't scared, chat. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. They took our dojo and they kicked it in, chat. It's fine, they're dead. It's not a big deal, chat. Everybody calm down, chat. Look at all these lands they gave me. We've got huge tracts of land. My shifting ceratops is looking forward to frolicking through our huge tracts of land. I'm sometimes lucky. We even get to clear an Aether Gust here before it happens. <laughs> Protection from the Blue Man group, chat. All right, now you gotta try and win one on the drop. It's a little bit harder.
Hey, Gilded, if you're still in Twitch chat, can you confirm the person that just messaged me on Discord is you? Just because the username's different? It is perfect. Welcome to Beverly Shills. I think I opened duress here. Try and clear the way. I think I'm gonna take iteration and then I'm gonna take creativity here. I'll just try and grind a little bit. Obviously they get to kill this, but this is gonna kill something at some point. I just wanna get through it. I don't think they play creature land, so I'm just gonna take them off a of color here. Oh, they have basic planes? That surprises me. Hopefully I didn't let them cast a four mana spell here. I think I go up with Soren against a Helix deck. My way. So ideally, we find a discard spell on our next three cards, so we can we can take this Aether Gust before we play this. Dire times call for dire tactics. Now we just start slamming. Yeah, I, I agree, Injured. They're very good. I think I leave Questerson on top here. I know I have shifting ceratops, but man, Soren ults pretty fast, doesn't it? That's annoying. My ways are not for the weak. Okay. I, I think we're ahead. Obviously, obviously they, they could top deck on us, but I like our position. We just kill the Elish Norn, right? I think continuing to go up is greedy. I think we just kill the Elish Norn. It's a throne, Andrew. Yeah, how? Dust Get dusted. Uh, that's our second time we've gotten to see the ultimate animation, 
but uh, we would have ulted it, but people conceded two other times too. So like, we've ulted a good amount of times. Our creatures are good against these crabs. They do not block us. Auto green unblockables, yep. Do we think they have the combo in their deck post board still? Because they, ha they have Elish Storm, right? They just like board into a bunch of fair cards. Like, what's, What does creativity do to us if they draw it here? Nice pickup. Yeah, and they can't currently settle because they don't have double white. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely copies of creativity in their deck. The question is, like, are there are the, is there a combo to go along with it, or are they just like all in on Elish Nords and stuff like that post board? So they're dead. Yeah, yeah, they were they were locust god game one. Game one they locust got at us, and then this game they all stormed us. They were dead without the creature land activation, but they weren't conceding, so I was gonna get my creature land activation in. <sighs> Chat, my boomer mid-range deck is feeling exceedingly reasonable. Yeah, yeah, so Sorin drawing three cards then alting has been has been guess. Okay, Faithless Looting is this keep hands a fine keep against. I was a little worried. I was pausing because they could have been auras. Innistrad is a fan favorite plane for a reason. Yeah, 
go blank in the main deck. Chat, we're being memed. We're being memed. Well, I'll, well, I'll be. That's hot. One Blood Chief's Thirst, please. You wish to know my secrets? Very well. They for sure hedge Clack Bridge Troll too. Very possible. Very possible. I, I mean, if we find a Blood Chief's Thirst, we can uh, we can play a real game here still. Because we're going to kill the Croxa and then exile it with Hive. Know that I will not abandon my quest. All right, let's just find out if they're on any basics. The note for the future. They are. We'll discard this thought seize that obviously doesn't have a lot of value at this point. It'll be the first thing we reach for during sideboarding is getting rid of all of our discard spells in a matchup like this. Just bring in more removal. I mean, all, all Doom Blades on deck type matchup for sure. Although, our Doom Blade and our Cast Down aren't particularly good against Croxa. Thank you, honey. Okay. Oh, no! I could pay two. Oh, that hurts. Yikes. So, go blank in historic is more about the this this opponent's actually playing go blank, and the opponent's deck is the type of deck we would want go blank against. Like, it's very possible that these Soul Guide Lanterns could be Go Blanks in my deck. But in in general, um, the discard spells you want in this format are targeted discard spells. Because decks in Historic tend to care more about having specific cards than they care about having, um, than they care about having a density of cards. So getting, getting to take away specific cards has a lot of value. I think I want Crippling Fear in this matchup. Trim Land War Elves get a little bit higher threat density. Our deck's not terrible. Like, we got Scavenger Goose and Soul Guide Lantern to, like, attack their graveyard stuff.
I think exiling one card from their graveyard here has more value than gaining a life does. Just gonna pass for now. Sorians felt really good in this show. I like it. I, li I like it a lot. I'm ditching Noxious Grasp here. Sad that we can't find a land. Magic problems. Flooded last game. Stumbled this game. I think we did nothing for like one turn too long this game. The <clears throat> had our fourth land one turn sooner. Oh really? This kind of surprises me. I was expecting them to set up Proctor into their other thing next turn. That's actually kind of good for us. Hey Captain Sedai, thanks for the 51 months. Welcome back. Yeah, okay. So they get to escape Croxa now, but then I can top deck a removal spell. So, you know, in it to win it. By the way, if you're someone like me who's a Junkatarian, and by that I mean you're a vegetarian but you eat a lot of garbage food for yourself anyways, these are Buffalo Wild Wings 
cauliflower wings. You can get any of the buffalo wild wings sauces on cauliflower that's fried. It's delicious. And these ones I'm eating are actually cold as they're, they're from last night, leftovers. Hey, Alex, thanks for the three and a half years. You think Aldrin's obnoxious and historic as well? I think, I think next time there's a competitive historic tournament, I would be pretty surprised if Aldrin's epiphany isn't a deck in this format. I think Aldrin's Epiphany largely hasn't been a problem on the Historic ladder so far because Historic's a pretty casual format a lot of the time. And uh, it's a pretty casual format a lot of the time and there aren't people working to break things like that. This cop who's gonna push our stuff in shit. This matchup's probably atrocious. Listen, I already get infinite robocalls per day. That's all, that's all I'm gonna say. If I didn't have children, if I didn't have children in a grade school, I would have gotten rid of my cell phone a long time ago as far as the actual phone number goes. My, my phone number exists in its entirety to receive spam calls. It's awful. I think we're dead, huh? Hopefully they drew lightning helix to finish this off. And the opponent's deck is gonna be real scary when it gets uh when it gets bring to light in this format. That card is certainly coming eventually. How do I even want to approach this matchup? I think I think we're supposed to take all of our planeswalker grind out and just hope to be this mediocre beatdown deck. Because we definitely can't go long against them, right? I think the discard spells are good to try and break up their curve. I think we just have to try and run them down. Two mana five fives at that, right? <sighs> that Kavu was a huge upgrade for the archetype for sure.
Well, Niv doesn't search the deck. It looks at cards on top, so that wouldn't even be useful, even if it was otherwise playable. I mean, this is the type of start we can beat potentially, right? I think we just play like there's no Clarion, and by that I mean let's draw a Thought Seize next turn so we can take it away if they have it. Come on, hit me, dealer. One discard spell. You gonna know, sweep the leg or are we we're gonna go to game three? They can have double spot removal here too, I suppose. Like Helix plus a push or vanishing verse. But also keep them in it. If they only take one thing off the board though, we should be in a good spot. Ah, is there anything more peak shitty control player than tank tank make the best possible play? There, re there really isn't, chat. I don't mind getting swept, like, just let me move on with my life, but, like, why do we gotta sit here and wait for you to do it? Like, there's no, there's nothing else you could be doing here. They're deciding whether or not to give life link. Yep. Fair. Fair. You always just click both, chat. Is there ever an instance, like, I guess if you're playing Clarion and Death Shadow, it's so weird to me... I guess you want it to be modal because you don't always want to deal three, huh? Sometimes you want just lifelink. Could you make that just a one mode card? Like, always get lifelink, click to deal three? Is that more efficient, less efficient, or the same? Maybe it's the same amount of efficiency. Similar amounts of efficiency. Hey, thanks for 11 months, Monk. Welcome back. Waiting, waiting. Do 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 You shouldn't put that card in deck that has creatures that die. So I don't think that's true, Gems. Especially when that card was standard legal, it's pretty common to play it inside of creature decks because you could lifelink to win a race if you had creatures on board. And if you didn't have creatures on board, it was a good catch-up card. We do that uh, Naya Feather in Historic. We play clear out of the sideboard usually for that reason. Sometimes you just want lifelink and other times it just catches you back up. Nice flexible card. Sometimes it's ketchup, other times it's mustard. Oh, you mean you could make it non-modal? No, I like I like the modalness of it. It's more just questioning that the giving your creatures life link is one. I mean, pairing 80 versus 826 is fine, chat. Like the, the difference between 80 and 826 is like two match wins. Yeah, man, the, M the internal MMR difference between me and my opponent right now is incredibly small. I want to Inquisition here. The Elf, I was definitely Inquisitioning before we drew the Elf, but the Elf lets me 
double spell next turn really nicely. I guess I get to double spell either way, right? Because we get to elf plus Ebon Legion. I think this is fine. Um, I think I'm going to take the fatal push from the efficiency standpoint. Nah, I think I've been pretty happy with the sleepy. When we're just playing ladder matches, if I have changes I want to make, I'll make them in between the matches that we're playing. This has felt, felt rather cohesive so far. Matchup or scavenging use is pretty reasonable. To trade off with things like Dread Wanderer. To trade here and then we'll play scavenging ooze plus eat the dread wanderer next turn are you just passing with murderous rider up yeah i guess that makes sense So they'll kill my Scoos, but we'll still get rid of the Dread Wanderer. And then we need to top deck a Maelstrom Pulse to answer the Wrinkle next turn. I suppose there's no guarantee they have the land. They have this plus their top of their deck to be get a land though. The question is, if they spike the land for the wrinkle, do they trade Knights here? Probably not, because theirs is getting bigger. Definitely a matchup where the removal spells in our sideboard look real appealing. I'm pretty okay with any of the modes on this card happening here. So bring it. Maybe I should have left back my knight that turn, expecting them to peel wrinkle, because then my knights could have bounced and their knights would, knight wouldn't have gotten a 1-1 one, one counter. That's probably the case. Yeah, I think, my, I think my attack the previous turn was bad if I was expecting wrinkle to be coming up. Yeah, but but then I would have drawn a card, the carp, and that's a that's an outcome I'm okay with. All right, name for these thought seizes to GTFO my deck. A removal suites, uh, pretty bad here, huh? This is a matchup I did not consider when picking out our removal spells. Perhaps Noxious Graph should be something else. Even Blade 2, perhaps. Honestly, I might just put these Ceratops in my deck, especially on the play. Yeah, our resource variance has not been kind to us. And I mean, our deck's playing 25 lands and four land worlds, or 29, nine resources. Yeah, cast down Mrs. Wrinkle too. That's not great. 
Like all of our, all of our removal spells are like slightly bad in certain situations, and like this this deck the opponent is playing is like hitting every situation that is bad in. It's not amazing, but I think it's keepable. Second green makes it a little better. Push Muskoos off a cliff. this down I think keep them off of spawn of mayhem this turn as most of their other plays they could make won't block questing beast profitably I'd be a murderous rider in my future but definitely just spending my mana here the alternative is spending no mana which is not great or quest your sin His heads are never gonna get into combat yet Grasp. Ooh! Is this the answer to my what removal spells are we playing question? Am I supposed to be playing Grasp of Darkness yet? It's a, that's a good one, huh? I like it. Can dig it. We're having ourselves a slap land off here. Unfortunately, their slaps for four and ours only slaps for three. Uh, I think we can cast black black cards consistently, right? Someone check my mana base. How many black sources do we have? We're on 15 or 16, right? They have fatal push here. It's a reason to attack with this. They're at a, we exiled their creature earlier because of scrap peep. They could have a removal spell here, but they could also just be getting priority because they can technically activate faceless haven. Man, is their hand just a bunch of blinks here? We have 19 black? Oh yeah, perfect. Oh yeah, because we're, we're playing discard spells on one, so we have a lot of black for that. Yeah, I like Grasp of Darkness. I, I like it a lot. The Aetherborn is gifted at many things, champ. Blocking questing beasts is not one of them, though. They do unfortunately get to survive this turn by blocking with Faceless Haven, right? But that's fine. Knight puts them to one, and then Land War Elf is lethal. We have three lethal threats next turn, including one with Menace. Questing Beast feels like a very appropriate power level threat for this format. Not overbearing like it was a little bit in standard, but just like on par with everything else that's going on. That's three. Finally, not in a meeting when you've been streaming, but catch it all on YouTube lately, but want to make sure I keep up the support of your channel. Thanks for the 21 months. Keep working, everything's been going all right. I 
I think the mana cost on Cemetery Prowler makes it a little bit awkward. Scavenging, Scavenging Ooze also just like grows wildly out of control. And the fact that Scavenging Ooze can like nuke a graveyard without having to get into combat also has a lot of value too. I think. I think there's a chance you could make the argument that like maybe you want Cemetery Prowler in addition to Scavenging Ooze. Like maybe like the Lawless at the top end have been kind of whatever. Maybe we want the curve to be slightly lower. Because we are we are playing Land War Elves, so like having good three mana spells does have a lot of value in this deck. I think I think Prowler's worth testing. I just don't think I'd cut skews. And by other threes are worth testing. I mean, please, Wizards of the Coast, remaster Shadows over Innistrad and give give me Tireless Tracker. Please, please give me Tireless Tracker. All I want for Christmas, Watsy, is a Tireless Tracker. <laughs> it's close. Help. I want a tracker. Help. A tireless tracker, do you? Would well, this deck play eight trackers? I'd start with eight. I don't know. I don't know that we'd end on eight, but I'd start with eight. So if they pump the knight, we'll kill the knight. If they don't pump the knight, we'll take the extra one to see if they have a spawn of mayhem that we can cast down. So your move, Yugi boy. I think we're killing Knight. Could go either way. I mean, Jim's not wrong. Tracker, Tracker is, is lovely. Okay. If this last card isn't another removal spell, this Quester Sin is uh, is quite good. Chris. They're out of gas. <laughs> Fucking auto tapper. We've got three creatures in our graveyard. That is really aggro. Plus one is not none opponent. One, one is not none. play some Mass Effect. This deck was fine, but I'm tired of getting peeled on. The last couple of matches have just been real shit variants. I'm, I'm over getting magic for the day. 
That player, that player even did the even did the salty rubs like Neener Neener. I drew the fatal push too, so over the arena ladder for sure. I think I think this will to be to be not sodium testic about it. I actually think this deck was super reasonable. It it felt like compared to the the black white mid range deck we played before this, it definitely felt like. Land War Elves and Questing Beast and Tireless Tra and uh, Briarbridge Tracker specifically solved a lot of the issues that the white deck had where its creatures were kind of mopey and it couldn't close efficiently. Um, things things I might want to try and do different. Um, I'm not sure that Lolf is correct at the top end. Like, I don't know that we need six ways to draw extra extra cards in the archetype. And maybe we want some other threats in here. Some people have mentioned the the three mana black werewolf could be worth testing. I don't know, there's probably some other like decently statted four power hasty things or just like decent aggressive threats that might be might be worth trying out. But I feel like this is probably something that you you could consider doing differently with. Maybe maybe six one mana discard spells is too many. The historic is like pretty creature based at the moment. So I think there could be some merit to um, there could be some merit to playing some more removal spells in the main instead of Inquisition. I think Lolf is better than five mana Vivian. The fact that she can create menace creatures to pressure the board I think is really nice, and her making tokens will work with Briarbird Tracker on occasion too. So I, I think if you want a five mana card advantage Planeswalker, I think Lolf is the is the one that you want. But I think if you don't want a five mana card advantage planeswalker, I would look at lowering the curve and playing something else that's more aggressive. I do want to trade out the Doom Blade and something else for Grasp of Darkness, though. Probably, probably just the Noxious Grasp, actually. I think having having some more of those to make the, the black matchup a little bit better while still being decent to the other aggressive matchup sounds something that's appealing. You try the new four mana four four haster from the new set. Yeah, maybe. We can even play some wrinkles ourselves too. Ooh, primal, primal adversary could be okay too. Perhaps it's just like a four power three drop that like scales a card, a card like this that like is an okay stat line early, but then scales off of your mana in the late game when you're playing a game that goes long. Like I could see primal adversary being very good here. Both, both the adversaries are actually cards that are probably, probably worth considering for this deck because the the black adversary fills okay early but then uses your mana late i guess i guess this is probably yeah fills fills that same void too right where like this is a card that fills the curve but then you could also dump mana into it once you flood out i do kind of like the idea of the black adversary though because if you look if you look at our curve our two slots a little empty but land war elves also helps us jump to three i think i think i'd try cutting lolf and maybe these two Inquisitions, and maybe you fit Inquisition into the board for like some extra cheap threats and maybe one to two more pieces of removal here. I don't think the Cemetery Wolf is very good. That one's a three, four, right? Cemetery Prowler. We just won't really get any value off the ramp on this. So I think, I think I'd rather have, I think if you wanted... I think if you want another card that attacks the graveyard, I think I'd rather have the uh, the werewolf with ward. Nah, I think I think vital force is not worthwhile. I think if you want, I guess vital force is kind of a haste threat. Maybe I don't know. I, I feel like I want to lower the curve. I, th I feel like Lolth is probably the best five, and I would want to try just like less fives, less lower curve. <laughs> 